I am a former police officer who worked as a deputy sheriff here in Central Florida. I had been working in law enforcement for around six years. I am not a novice or rookie by any means. On January 19th, 2007, I was working as a school resource officer at a middle school here in Orlando, Florida. I was sitting in my patrol car in a parking lot on the east side of the building when I noticed a man walking across the parking lot. I was in uniform and had my marked patrol car parked in a visitor parking spot in front of the school. I was busy writing my notebook and did not think much about the man at first. I thought he was a parent picking up a student. But the man did not come into the school like a parent should and did not look like one. I watched the man walk around the back of the building and then appear on the other side. He was walking very slowly, deliberately, and with his head tilted downwards toward the ground. He looked very strange. He was wearing a white shirt and white pants and was also wearing a black jacket. Keep in mind it was like May or June, very hot in the Florida heat. The man stopped walking, looked straight up at me, and then walked slowly towards my car. I put my notebook down and realized immediately something was wrong. I could see his face clearly as he approached my car. His eyes were jet black, and all around his eyes were very dark. He had a very weird look on his face. He did not look right. It was almost as if he was doing this on purpose, maybe trying to scare me. He wasn't walking normal either. He was walking very deliberately, very slowly. When he got to my car, he walked around it, then walked around the other side. He was now standing about five feet away from my car. He was a white male, about 6'1", very thin. He also looked very unnaturally skinny, like he was just skin and bones. But his arms and legs were too long. It didn't really make sense. His face was also strange, too, the closer I looked. His nose was kind of unnaturally long, and I would describe it as kind of similar to that of a beak or a hook. His face was also very slender and stretched. I reached for my taser, because I felt imminent danger from him. This guy was bad news. I kept my gun in my holster. I did not want the situation to escalate to the point to where I would be forced to use deadly force. I reached across my body, grabbed my taser, and as I did, the man turned and slowly walked away. He began to walk away while staring at me. I got out of my car and followed him. We walked very slowly, about three feet every five seconds. I told him to stop, but he would not turn around. I walked up to him, grabbed him by the shoulder. He stopped and spun around and grabbed me by the neck and pulled me close to him. His hands and fingers were disgusting, and he smelt like rotting meat. He had long black nails that dug into my throat. I reached for my gun. I pulled it out and pointed it at him, demanding he stop. I told him I was going to shoot him if he did not let me go. But instead, this excited him, it seemed. He grabbed hold of me even tighter, tried to pull me close. It was in that moment that he pulled back his lips revealing a mouthful of black, rotten, sharp teeth that resembles more of a shark than anything. I was in fear for my life, so I fired two shots into his chest. He stood there for a second, then collapsed to the ground. He did let go of my neck. I took a few steps back, and he laid on the ground face down. He was not moving. I radioed dispatch and told them that I just shot a man. I told them, that the man was attacking me, and that he had dark rotten teeth, black eyes, and he looked wrong. There was something very wrong about this guy. He did not look right or act right in any way. So, I could see the man was breathing slowly. He was not bleeding from the gunshot wounds like I had thought. As I watched him, I noticed that his back was very weird. He did not have any muscles, at least, that were visible. No tone at all. It was just skin. I could see almost every rib. I could see every vertebrae in his spine. The back of his jacket that he had on and shirt were almost ripped at the back. So, when he was on his face, 
his back was almost entirely exposed. It was very bizarre. His arms were unnaturally thin, like I said. I watched him breathe for about five minutes, but he wasn't really moving. I cautiously approached him with my taser drawn. I still did not want to get too close. I had told dispatch that I was going to check him for a pulse to try and get some paramedics when the shots were initially fired. So I knelt down beside him and felt his neck for a pulse. I could not find one. I found a very weak and rapid pulse by his wrist. I told dispatch I thought he was close to death. When paramedics had arrived, just a few minutes after the five minute mark, they radioed back and told me I had just shot a homeless man. I told them that he was not homeless. He did not appear homeless. He looked very strange. I gave the description of the man and they said they would send a crime scene unit to the location. The paramedics even checked the man for a pulse, but they couldn't find one. I told them to try again and they did. They found a very faint pulse. The paramedics said the man would probably die from the gunshot wounds although they were concerned why there was never any blood, just this thick, black ooze pouring out of the wound. The paramedics also said they had never seen anything like this before. The man looked like an unnatural skeleton, and I know he was not dead yet, but they needed to hurry. They said they were doing everything they could, so they called for a helicopter to transport the man to the hospital. The helicopter landed in the parking lot, the paramedics put the man on a stretcher, loaded him into the chopper, and they took off, headed for the hospital. I went inside the school and asked one of the office workers to tape off the area. I then went to my car and called my supervisor to tell him what had happened. I told him that the man had attacked me and that I had shot him. He said he would meet me at the hospital where the man was being transported. The crime scene unit arrived and I took them to the scene. They took pictures, and I gave them a full statement. I then went to the hospital and met with my supervisor. He asked if I was all right. I told him I was fine. He asked me what had happened. I frankly told him I don't know. Whatever I encountered was not normal. Out of all the years I've seen drug addicts and psychos and domestic violence, this man was wrong. Everything about him. A dark face, his teeth, his eyes... This was not a normal person. I almost even doubt he was human. I know that sounds far-fetched, but when you deal with it face to face, there was something so off. So, we went to go see the man and the paramedics were treating him. They were giving him fluids and were doing everything they could. But he was acting psychotic, groaning and screaming, but not in pain. He was also bleeding badly if you could call it that. Except there was no blood. It was just this thick black ooze running all down his body. I've never seen anything like it. His smell was even worse than before. The entire room smelled just like rotting meat. He began convulsing violently and began screaming and speaking in a language none of us have ever heard before with a different voice. And then, shortly thereafter, he had passed. To be honest with you, I'm not really sure what he was, because I can tell you from dealing firsthand, I'm confident that this was in no way human. I saw a dogman in the summer of 2009. I was out at my family's cabin in northern Michigan, near the towns of Vanderbilt and Mackinac. It had been a hot day, and we decided to camp out on the property. We had a fire going and we were sitting around the fire. My two brothers and I were out grilling, hanging out. It was very dark, and there was no moon that night. I happened to look up at the sky and saw a large, dark figure moving quickly across the sky. It was moving so fast that it looked like a blur. It was heading in a south-southwest direction, and I noticed that it was not a bird. It had no wings. It was not a plane because it was not moving like one either. It was simply a huge black figure that was gliding across the sky, very large. It was also very low in the sky, no higher than a few hundred feet up. It was moving very fast. I had never seen anything like that before. 
so in fear of what I was seeing. I ran inside, woke my two brothers, and we all went outside to see if we could spot that creature or animal again. As we're standing outside for a few moments, we notice a strange noise coming from around my brother's tent that he had set up for the dogs. It was a strange kind of growling noise, a mixture between a dog and a wolf. It sounded like a dog, but with a deeper growl. So I ran over to the tent, unzipping the door, and I saw my brother's two dogs, an Australian Shepherd and a German Shepherd inside. They were both nervous, uneasy, and growling. I could hear something moving around near the tent, and it sounded like a large animal. Now I was scared, more so because of how the dogs were acting. They could sense something was wrong. I managed to get the dogs out of the tent. My brothers decided to go with me, and we all stood there in the dark. That's when we heard a very loud noise coming from near the woodpile. It sounded like a growl mixed with a roar, and sounded like it was coming from a very large animal. We turned on some flashlights and saw the creature standing behind the woodpile. We saw it very clearly. It was a huge, hairy creature that kind of looked like a werewolf. I was terrified. The creature was no more than 70 feet away from us. It had long black stringy hair and hair all over its face. It appeared very muscular and lean and tall. It was kind of a mixture between a dog and a man. Long pointed ears and what appeared to be a skinny tail. I could not see its eyes very well. This creature that was growling at us we all stood there for about two minutes, and then it turned around, slowly, and walked off into the woods. It moved quickly, but it also kind of hunched over. I never saw it again. I'm not a hunter, and I have never killed anything. I'm, in fact, very anti-hunting, but I've never put it past myself to actually buy and own a gun, because maybe now's a good time to start doing that. In the summer of 2007, I was working at Camp Lost Isle, a small island off the coast of northern Michigan. My job was to run the kids program, which involved taking kids out on the wilderness adventures for days, or leading them in arts and crafts. That summer, I had a couple of kids come to me and talk about seeing a monster. You see, this was not uncommon. At that camp, the woods were very mysterious and scary so it was not surprising that kids had seen ghosts or monsters and other strange things. Myself, I was always skeptical about these stories for the same reason adults tell children not to talk to strangers, because adults don't believe in ghosts and monsters. But, you see, these kids were insistent. They told me they had seen a monster with yellow eyes and a face with a long snout, kind of like a coyote. I didn't believe them at first, but then I began to notice other kids talking about this same monster. Soon, that monster was all anybody would be talking about. One kid said he had seen it during an adventure in the woods, and another said he had seen it from her cabin window. It was at that moment that I began to believe there might be some truth to this thing. Maybe it was just a simple misidentification but something was going on. I just didn't know what or how real, until one night, as I was lying in my bunk, I heard something stepping on the roof of the cabin adjacent. It was very loud, and it sounded like a person stomping on a tin roof. I jumped up out of my bed, shined a flashlight around, but the noises had ceased and I could see nothing. So, after a couple of moments, I went back inside. Now the following night, I heard the same thing. Ran outside, looked around, didn't see anything. After that, it started to affect my sleep. I was scared to go to bed. I eventually confronted one of the camp counselors about this monster. I asked her if she had seen it and told her my experiences. I explained that kids had been talking about it and maybe, just maybe, it was their way of dealing with the fear of being away from home. So, I decided at that moment 
I would have to investigate this on my own. So, on one of the evenings, I followed the same path that the kids had been taking when they went to the bathroom at night. This trail led through the woods and eventually to the top of a small hill. I waited until it was late at night and then walked out there myself. There was not much but forest and it was pretty dark. So I climbed down to the other side of the small hill and walked through the woods. I was not really sure where I was going but I just kept walking. Eventually, I found myself standing at the edge of a forest. I had no idea where it was, but I felt like I was being pulled into the woods. I took a step forward. Then I heard something. I turned around quickly, and there in the darkness was a face with yellow eyes and a long snout. I knew right then that it was this monster. It was as if I could feel its energy. I knew and it knew that it had seen me. I stood there frozen, and I heard something. It sounded kind of like a voice, but it was nothing like I had ever heard before. It was kind of like a combination of a roar and a whisper, and it was right behind me. I turned around and saw this thing. Next, it was standing next to me, and it was staring straight at me. I don't remember what had happened next. I think I must have blacked out because I woke up, and it was morning, and I was lying in the woods. I knew it was still early, so everybody would still be asleep. I walked back to camp, and I told nobody about what had happened, and I could not sleep that night. That night, though, the noises on the roof adjacent to my cabin were very loud. I didn't dare get out and look. I was so busy thinking about this monster. The next day after that felt even more different. It's hard to explain, and even after days and months the incident had occurred, I never did feel quite the same. Like something inside of me changed. The kids still kept talking about seeing this thing, and a couple of weeks, everyone began referring to it as a Wendigo. So, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Was this just some massive nightmare plaguing our camp? Or did I and everybody else encounter a real-life Wendigo? I lived in Point Pleasant at the time of the Mothman. I was 12 years old and remember it very vividly. I was sleeping over at a babysitter's house that was only about a block away from my home. For some reason, I woke up right at 3 a.m. I was lying in bed with my eyes closed and I was thinking about the Mothman, wondering if he's going to come back. Then, I felt something in my spirit, my body, tell me that everything went wrong. I opened my eyes and, standing outside my window, I couldn't see anything but this black, dark shape, and I knew it was him. I was standing completely still, and so was it. This thing was staring at me. He was big and black and had red eyes. I was paralyzed with fear and could not move. About 30 seconds later, he just sort of melted back into the darkness out the window. I know it wasn't a nightmare. I was wide awake. Well, a few years go by and I heard that the babysitter had been seeing this thing too, but she didn't tell anybody because she was too afraid that somebody would think she was crazy and she would lose her babysitting gig. That's why I'm sure it was real. I live in the country on a dead-end road. I've lived here for 20 years and I've seen many strange things. In fact, when we first moved in, I would see this big black dog with red eyes. It frightened me, but I would go out at night to try and see it. It appeared for years. One day, we were in the middle of a cornfield. The corn was about 10 feet high at the time. That might be an exaggeration, but it was pretty tall. We were walking in the middle of the field, and I just got a very bad feeling that somebody was watching me. I looked up, and saw this pale man in a black suit with a hat standing in the corn a ways away. Now, I've had several strange encounters with things I can't exactly explain. I've also seen a large black dog with red eyes. I used to call him Bad Dog. I also see a strange figure with red eyes too. It is about the size of, I don't know, 
maybe me, but a little bit taller and broader. It shows up at night and watches me sometimes. These are just many strange things that happen around here. Safe to say, I don't really like to go out at night anymore. I feel like I'm watched constantly. I was living in Arizona at the time, and one afternoon, I was driving into Sedona on a dirt road. It was a very warm day, and I was driving with the windows down. I was a little lost, but I was sure I was going in the right direction. All of a sudden, I see this huge creature walking in the middle of the road. At first, I didn't know what it was. All I saw was a big mass of purple. It was kind of like the color of a lavender plant or a lilac, and it looked like it was maybe wearing a robe, but I couldn't be sure. It was the size of maybe three or four men standing on top of each other, freakishly tall. I stopped dead still and stared at it, not sure what I was looking at. It looked at me too, and I could tell it was looking at me. I saw two large eyes on the sides of its head, and they were huge black eyes. Then, it began walking towards my vehicle. I had no idea what to do, and it was so huge it was moving quickly. I was concerned that it could have killed me. So, I began to drive away as fast as I could. I did not look back, and I didn't stop until I got to town. I don't know if I had just seen an alien or what on earth I spotted, but it certainly was a freak of nature. I tried telling my friends about it, but they didn't believe me. They thought I was making it up, or I was drunk, which I was not. I have never told anybody about it until now. I haven't seen it since, and for some reason, I had to write about it. I still have the memory of it in my head. I can remember it to this day. I will never forget what I saw. It was easily one of the most frightening things I've ever seen, and strangest. I never saw what it was, but I heard more than enough for me to ever want to see what it looked like. I was going through this phase in my life where I was solo camping a lot, and this was a good way for me to deal with problems that I was going through. I felt like solo camping was kind of my escape. I'm usually a pretty big camper, but always end up camping with other people, like friends and family. I enjoyed the company, but I really enjoyed being alone and the solace that comes with it for just a couple of days. It allowed me to think and to clear my mind. This night, I was up in the foothills. I don't know what animal this was and I can't claim it was one thing or another. But here's what I can tell you about what had happened. I had just finished setting up camp for the night and was sitting, listening to the crickets and bullfrogs. Then, I heard something in the woods that sounded like a woman screaming. I didn't think much of it, until I heard it again. This time it was much louder. Then it screamed again and, this time, sounding like it was right next to me. I started to freak out a little bit, grabbed my flashlight. My hands began shaking. I stood up and I heard something moving quickly in the woods. It was big. I could hear branches and leaves breaking, leaves being crushed underfoot. I was so scared that I could not move. I just stood there in my tent, shaking like a leaf. It got closer and closer, and I thought it was going to come into my tent. Then, I heard it moving up the hill away from me. It was moving incredibly fast, and it was making these loud snapping, cracking, popping noises. I could hear it moving farther and farther away from me, until it finally stopped. I stayed up like all night, and I'm still freaked out by it. The next night that I went up to the top of the hill, I tried to find any sign of this creature. I didn't see or hear anything. I didn't find any tracks, nothing. But I found a bunch of broken limbs. It was like it came down the hill just to scare me, but then went back to wherever it came from. I don't know what it was or what it wanted, but I know I don't ever want to see it again. I hope that this story has scared you enough to keep you from going. 
deep into the woods. I was on a long drive back from Texas through Nevada to my home in Southern California. The time was around 9 p.m. I was driving in a desert region of the state. I mean, well, all the state is desert, but this area is pretty lonesome. I was all alone on this long road. It was a simple two-lane highway with no business nearby. You're kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. There were no street lights or anything. It was not completely pitch black, because there was some light from the moon and stars. And as a person who lives in an urban area, I get a bit frightened driving in these kind of dark situations. So, I was driving cautiously. I had my car windows rolled down, and I was listening to the radio at a low volume. Then, I see the shape of something large flying directly towards my car. It flew directly in front of my car. I slam on my brakes. It was so fast. I could not make sense of what I was seeing. I saw it fly right in front of my car, so I instantly stopped. I was still trying to figure out what I saw, and I was looking around. I did not know what to do. I sat there in the car with the engine going, completely stunned, and I was not sure if this was a bird or a bat or maybe a person or something. I just knew it was something large and flying. Then, I hear this horrible screeching coming all from outside. I couldn't make out the direction, but I could hear something making the noise. Then, I began driving slowly, and I see this shape coming back towards the vehicle again. Now, I'm scared out of my mind, because it came rushing at my car and then swooped up in the air really fast. This thing looked like some large bat creature, but I couldn't really tell. I was too scared to look at it. It was flying right over me, and this time I could hear the fluttering noise. I saw some shape and this thing was flying in some erratic flight patterns. Then it swooped down right on the road in front of my car, forcing me to stop. That's when my headlights illuminated this thing fully, and I saw every horrifying detail for the first time. It was a creature with a very large body, maybe the size of a man. It was covered in hair with an almost owl-like appearance. It had large wings, it was black in color, and had a very large head. It was not the head of a human, though. The head was more round and dome-shaped like an owl's, and it had really large black eyes and a mouth with teeth. I could even kind of see a tongue sticking out. The mouth was open, exposing teeth, and it appeared to be breathing very heavily. It was also accompanied by a terrible odor, kind of like rotting meat that had been left in a hot dumpster for days. This thing was visibly standing on two legs with its wings folded up. They kind of looked like ratty, torn-up bat wings. Instantly, in my mind... I just knew this was some sort of demon. So I floored my car and swerved around it, barely missing it, getting up to 90. I could not believe this thing was real. I was so scared. I started going faster and faster, and I managed to get away. I drove for miles and miles, and for a couple of hours after, my adrenaline finally began to wear off. Now, I was feeling exhausted and I think I just pulled over to a random pullout and tried to sleep. Even though I was very hesitant to do so, in case this thing came back, I probably didn't fall asleep till closer to maybe two or three in the morning, just because of how scared I was. I'm lucky that I never saw this thing again after that, and was not awakened in my car by this thing. I know what I saw. I know this was not a man in a costume. I know this was not a bird or any animal. This was a demon. I know that demons and evil exist, and this was no doubt a demon. I was lucky to escape. I believe this demon was doing something in the desert, and it targeted me. I believe this thing was maybe looking for something, or I just happened to drive in the wrong place at the wrong time. If these creatures are real, and they are capable of doing anything they want, who knows what it was wanting for me, or trying to do? Then, I always ask myself, why didn't it pursue me more? It could have if it wanted to, 
It clearly wanted my attention for something. Could it have possibly been there to warn me? I was born in a small town in western Kansas, and while there, I had a close encounter with a creature I call a skinwalker. I've been trying to study the whole skinwalker phenomenon for about 20 years now. I have come to the conclusion that a skinwalker is a shapeshifter from another dimension, and they can take the form of anything it wants. The incident I'm about to tell you about happened back in the summer of 1973. The strange creature I saw was about seven feet tall, hairless, and had red glowing eyes. It was standing on the roof of my house. It had long arms and a long, thin neck, and a face that was long and pointed. It looked kind of like an ape, or something. It kind of had a bit of a shuffle to it. It was strange, and it was clearly not human. The one night, I was in my bed asleep, and I woke up to what sounded like a helicopter landing on the roof. I went to look out the window when I looked out, and I see this huge, distorted figure standing on the rooftop. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I got my dad, and he took a look out the window. And of course, he didn't see anything. I told him it was still there. Then we both ran outside. When we got outside, the creature had disappeared. It was gone. It was too fast for us to catch. The next day, I told all my friends about it. They just thought I was making it up. This creature left a smell that was very strange, and there was a strong smell of sulfur, like you would smell in a chemical factory. I also smelled a strong manure smell. It was very unpleasant. It was the smell of death. I don't know what this creature was, but it was not human. It was a demon. I've been trying to figure it out for 20 years, and the next night, my father and I are getting out of our truck, and my dad gasps because he sees this being on our roof again. Points, and I see it now too. The same creature was there. It looked to be about maybe seven feet tall and had red glowing eyes. This thing jumps into the air and off behind the house. We both go into the house and slam the door. There would be times at night afterwards where we could hear this thing walking around the back side of the house as if waiting for the right opportunity to do something. I tell you this story because you can believe it or not. I know what I saw. I am a former police city officer in Kansas. I know what I saw. I don't care what anybody says. I was born and raised in Kansas, and I tell you this with 100% certainty. I know what it was. At least, I'm confident I am. And I'm also confident that this wasn't a human in any way, shape, or form. This thing was ultimately terrifying. This was back in the summer of 2013, when I had my first experience with the unknown. Let me just put this in there and say, I can confidently say to this day, I'm not exactly sure what this thing was. I'll do my best to describe it to you, and maybe you can figure out what it is that I saw. I've never seen any animal like it, and never knew it existed. I also lived around a huge swamp plot of land, hundreds of acres of undeveloped marsh and swamp. I was walking home from school one day, when I noticed something large in the trees moving close by. I thought it was maybe just a big dog at first, but as it began moving around, it turned out to be this giant lizard with a very long tail. This thing also was completely upright, like a grown man would, taller than I. I never in my life could imagine, or begin to imagine, seeing a fully two-legged lizard. I knew I was in shock when I saw it. I had no idea what this was. It was like a partial man, partial lizard hybrid. I was able to see its clawed feet and hands, as well as the lizard-like head and body. This thing was brownish in color and had the most human-like eyes I've ever seen on a reptile. It did not have any hair on it at all. I believe it was looking for food, by the way. It was kind of walking and sniffing the air. I was able to see it for a few seconds before it realized I was looking at it, and then it ran off into the trees. I didn't know what to do or think. It was like I was in a trance. 
I was so shocked. I couldn't even move to call out for help. I just stood there in shock and disbelief. And I thought, did I just see that? In fact, for the next few days, I kept thinking about it over and over, just trying to rationalize and compartmentalize what I saw. I just kept telling myself it was the trick of the eye and maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. I thought I was going crazy. I kept trying to just rationalize it over and over. But I knew I saw something. But I was so confused as to what it was. So I told a few of my friends about this thing that I saw. And they had no idea what it was either. I just didn't know what to do with myself. And about a full week later, I saw it again. The area where I saw it the very first time is very thick brush, trees, and swamp. Around this time, it was early June, just before school got out, so everything was very thick and lush. It would be really hard to get back there, let alone in a giant lizard suit, so that's why I never thought it to be somebody in a suit playing a prank. The second time that I saw it, it was moving slowly back towards the swamp in an area that's a little bit more cleared out still littered with swamps and trees, just more open so you can see further back, and I caught movement out of my eye. I turn to look, and for a second, I see the same creature darting through the trees way back in there. It honestly made me shudder. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. I was a little more prepared this time because I saw it before it saw me. This time, I was able to get a better look at it, I was able to see its body and hands more clearly from this angle too, mainly just because of how large they were. It was very muscular, like a bodybuilder. It was standing in a wide-legged stance and watching me. I couldn't see its facial features very well because it was still far away, but I could see the shape of its head and eyes. I also saw its tail. It was much longer than before, and again it was brownish in color with splotches of green. This was no doubt a living, breathing creature. So, I started to think about it more and more. And I thought, is this a mutant or something? But, I didn't know of any radiation in the area. Look, I know that's probably a stretch to assume such a thing from what I saw, and, but I have no idea how to explain it away. Is it possible that giant human lizards live down here in the swamps of eastern Texas? I was 19 years old, studying in a college in a remote village in the Amazonian region of Peru. I was the only foreigner in my class. One day, I was walking down a trail in the jungle when I noticed a strange growth on the trunk of a tree. It was like an elongated wart and was about the size of a human hand. I looked at it more closely and it began to move. There was a small hole in the wart-like growth and a brownish, moist, worm-like creature emerged and looked up at me. It was longer than six inches, with a tapered head and a very wrinkled, ugly body. It kind of resembled a worm, but moved like a snake. It had large, black, lidless eyes, and it was covered in these kind of gray-brown scales. It was very smooth and silky and shiny. I was shocked, and I stood there, staring at it. I called my Peruvian friend over, and he was just as shocked as I was. We stood there for a while, staring at it. Then, after watching it, it kind of just slithered into a hole in the tree and disappeared. I was so fascinated that I forgot to take a photo. The next day, I went back to the same spot, but this creature was not there. Maybe I was hallucinating. But my Peruvian friend confirmed what I saw. I'm not sure what this creature was, but... It was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was nothing like the drawings of a snake or a worm, or anything that lives in this jungle. It was something alien and unknown. I thought I was going crazy, so I hardly have ever told anybody about this. I didn't even mention it to my other Peruvian friends. It was too strange. So I just put the experience in the back burner of my mind. I have not been back to the area since afterwards I left. I don't know what happened to that thing, or maybe there are more of them. Maybe it's an undiscovered species. I'm not sure. I wonder, though, how many people will ever even believe my story.
I was sitting on the sofa in my living room with my wife and daughter. My dog was off to the side, lying down. I was petting my dog when something caught my eye. It was a shadow on the wall. The shadow was very tall, taller than my 6'4 height. I looked at the shadow and noticed that it looked like a person. Maybe it was just my wife in the kitchen. But when I looked at her, she was on the other side of the room. The shadow kind of moved across the living room, and I turned to look and could see it was somebody outside, a tall bipedal creature. It had long arms and legs and a shorter torso. It had kind of a more elongated neck with a small head. The body had an almost plump appearance, and it was covered in dark hair. The head was also covered in long hair. It was very strange looking. My entire family was gasping at what we were seeing. This was like a man in some sort of suit, but obviously not a man in a suit. It appeared as if whatever this thing was was moving from one patch of woods to the next and was acting stealthy. It was moving very slowly, as if it was being very cautious. No matter where it stepped, it was always in view. I was afraid to look away for fear of it being gone. We watched it move from back to the front of the house and then went into the other patch of woods and we lost sight of it. It was maybe seven feet tall. The area around here is swampy, so I assume that's where it's been living. It walked on two legs, by the way. The creature appeared to be very wary of anything around it. I believe it was checking out the house to see if there were maybe anyone around it, to hopefully not be seen. It did not seem aggressive, and it was very quiet. But I do not think that it was sneaking up on us. It was easily the strangest thing we have all ever seen. I'm not sure of the time of this incident, though. I would guess maybe 10.30 at night. So, did we see a Bigfoot, or was this something else? Okay, this is easily the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm serious, and I will never forget it. I was walking home from a family dinner at about 9.30 p.m., a little bit tipsy. I was walking along a gravel path near a creek when I see this strange thing emerge from the water. I froze. It was a creature that appeared to be a cross between a reptile and a seal. It was about three feet long and about two feet high. It had scales, but kind of had flippers. Its head was shaped kind of like a seal's, but it had a long snout, like that of a caiman and beady little yellow eyes. I was horrified. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth and its jaws were wide open and it came right at me. I almost fainted, I was so startled and scared. It hissed and it sounded very threatening. I turned and ran, but it was chasing after me very quickly. It was faster than I thought it would be. I couldn't believe what this thing was. It chased me for a couple of minutes before I lost it. It tried to get me, but I was too fast for it. It kind of moved like a lizard does, but it was built more like a reptile than a seal. I don't really know what to say about it, and I don't think I'll ever forget about what I saw. It's too crazy. I don't know what it is or why it exists, and I have no idea how I was ever able to sleep afterwards. I know my account might seem ridiculous and far-fetched, but believe me, I've never imagined anything looking like a failed science experiment to come out of the water and try to strike me. It's easily the most disturbing thing I've seen. A couple of years back, my husband was driving me home from work and I was sitting in the passenger seat of his car. We were stuck in traffic. It was around dusk and getting dark. We were on a rural road and it was a very clear night. We stopped at a red light when I noticed something. As I was staring straight ahead, I noticed something off to my right in the woods to the side of the road. It was standing there, looking at me. To start with, it was very dark in color and very dark in the woods. There wasn't much light, but I was able to see this. Because there was an automatic flagger and road work up ahead, the several cars of traffic in front of us, I'm sure, saw it too. 
The figure was covered in hair and very tall like a man. It had a very elongated face with large black eyes. It was staring right back at me. It kind of just slowly crept back into the woods from where it came. I'm sure others saw it too. They had to have. I mean, it was right there. My husband and I were terrified, but we were stuck. There was nowhere we could have moved or gone. After it disappeared, I'm telling my husband this thing might come back, and we kept talking, trying to figure out what it was. The flagger turned green, and we all drove off and did not end up seeing that thing a second time. I know what I saw, and I believe it. It was some sort of large beast that had human-like features and covered in hair. I'm not sure what it was. I don't believe in Bigfoot, and I don't think it was a Bigfoot, even if I did believe. While the body looked like a human's with thick hair, kind of like a bear's, the face was animalistic. I don't think it was a bear either. I didn't see any claws or teeth, but it just had to have been some sort of wild beast. Some kind of unexplained animal. Was this thing trying to communicate? I don't know. I'm just glad it didn't attack me or my husband. I mean, it was scary. I'm not sure if this was some kind of swamp creature or what. I just know what I saw, and it was very, very terrifying. When we were kids, me and my sister weren't allowed in the swamp, which is exactly why we wanted to go back there and see what it held. When you're that age, which was around the sphere of seven or eight, a swamp looks like some kind of forbidden wonderland. In some cases, it looks like an entirely different planet altogether. I wonder if my parents knew that it was only a matter of time before we gave into our impulses. They had told us to go outside and play because an argument was ramping up between them. So, we knew they were going to be really distracted with each other and would not be paying us any mind until they were done with their scuffle. Even after that, it would take them some time to come around to the present world and recalibrate their priorities. So, me and my sister were practically joined at the hip as we stepped into a world that was so different, so terrifying, and so wonderful all at the same time. We were consumed by the different sounds and colors and forms. Every single thing had some form of slime, but didn't seem to be anywhere that you could sit down without getting wet. That's the swamp, go figure. And every single place looks like it could have been a living thing that would swallow you up as soon as you let your guard down. We began hearing a terrible sound. It was that of crying and it almost sounded like it could have been my sister's voice. And for half a second, I looked at her in alarm to ask her what was wrong. But she had the same expression as she looked at me. The crying continued, and we both noticed that it could not have been coming from either one of us. It seemed to bounce all over, as if it were coming from multiple directions at once. But then, we were certain that it was coming from a deeper, more treacherous part of the swamp where everything was denser the water the foliage the trees and the apparent lack of light we were torn between going to investigate and seeing what we could do to offer help or go to get our parents first both of which were solutions that had critical problems if we went to get our parents we would be admitting that we went to the swamp when we were not supposed to, and they were already angry. Lord only knows what our punishment would have been. If we went without our parents on the other hand, well, things could turn out badly for anybody that decides to set foot in that swamp without an adult. In the end, we decided to go in without getting our parents first. I guess if you're reading this, you probably shouldn't be too surprised. The sound of that crying was tugging on our hearts just too hard. Drawing in closer to the crying brought us into a thick mist that we had not seemed to notice. Before long, visibility was much more limited than we thought. My footing suddenly disappeared from underneath me, 
and if I had not crammed hold of my sister's hand, I might have gone under. I found a patch of something that was completely liquid, like it could have been quick sand or something, maybe just thin mud, but there was enough of it and too little of me to keep me above it. There, my sister held on to me helplessly to keep me from going under completely, and both of us stiffened up when the crying began to melt into chuckling, and then into giggling. My sister, bless her heart, had just enough strength in her little body to wrestle me free of the grip of that sinkhole. We laid on the ground exhausted for a few moments before getting up. When we got up and were able to walk away, the giggling sound turned into some kind of rage, like somebody began screaming angrily, except it was much deeper and rattling and terrifying sounding. It terrified us both so much that we ran home and convinced the facing consequences of our parents. However, to look back this day, our punishment was nothing that paled in comparison to what awaited us deeper in the swamps. That will always stick with me, and even today, me and my sister still sometimes talk about it. It really gave us chills, and sometimes we'll try and speculate what it could have been. Maybe it was an animal caught in a bear trap. No, because it sounded too different. It was a scream like no other, like an animal couldn't make it, but neither could a human. I'm not exactly sure, and I wish I had a recording to send to you so you could see what I mean. As always, have a great day, and thanks for hearing me. You know, there are so many, many reasons that you should stay away from the swamp. I mean, apart from the obvious dangers and creatures that inhabit them, like big snakes, water moccasins, I think, gators, alligator gar, all sorts of poisonous, dangerous animals that live quite happily in the murky waters that we really don't even know about. But of course, I learned that lesson the hard way. Now, I'll admit right now, I like to kill stuff. I consider myself an avid hunter, and the thrill of the hunt is something I can't quite put a finger on. It's an indescribable, amazing feeling. Maybe not so much taking the life of an animal. Maybe it's more so the little thrill of the hunt. I have a house full of trophies, and if I can't take the carcass home for some reason, then I sure as hell will be taking photographic evidence. I make sure to utilize every bit of my kill, so not only do I keep it as a trophy, but I store all the meat as far back as I can, from backstrap to steak, you name it. If it lives and breathes, I'll try and pop a bullet, and the more you kill, the bigger the thrill. Once, I had ticked off a known animal I was legally allowed to shoot. I wanted more. The buzz had long worn off for getting a deer, coyote, even bear. So I set out in different places for a more crazy adventure. I wanted to test my skills against the swamplands of Louisiana. Why? Because the terrain is incredibly challenging and at times hostile some sort of messed up lizard type thing that I've heard that lives out there that's apparently as big as a man. But I've also heard stories of Bigfoot too, so I don't know. For me, the experience was like honey to a bee. I had to go and find it, kill it. I don't know what I thought I was gonna find, why I thought that somehow I was the man to find a swamp creature which had either managed to survive up until now since the dinosaur days, like Bigfoot, or maybe I was looking for some kind of super breed, born from an abomination when two animals should never have bred. But wouldn't you know, I actually did find something. And since my encounter, I've tried to do research into these things, and one thing that come up time and time again is the awful stench that these beings give off. Maybe just another indication of how they're not truly one of the gods' creations. I sure as hell recall the stink. I have caught me several skunk over the years, 
and this was hell of a lot worse than those stinky little beggars. It was truly like something had crapped itself, spent all day rolling in it, and eaten a ton of rotten fish, and then pooped out all of that rotten fish again. You get the picture. It was a terrible culmination of odors. I was already beginning to regret coming when that hit me, but also being the big hunter and thrill seeker that I am, I knew I had a chance to kill something that only said to exist. So, getting my gun ready, I crept alongside the creek, on the lookout for anything that moved. I was pretty much ready to blast it into oblivion. So, when I sensed movement and could see the murky, stinking water start to bubble not too far in front of me, I shot at it, unloaded most of the rifle into the water, actually. And you know what floated up to the surface? A snake. Just as I was cursing and wondering whether to bother trying to hook it or leave it, something happened as a trained hunter has never happened to me before. I felt a breath on the back of my neck. This thing was right behind me. It was big. I slowly turned around. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't actually believe in this sucker. That I would come all the way out here, kill it. But I didn't actually think it was real. So let me kind of clarify. I thought that the premise was real enough, and I knew I would come back with some kind of trophy. I just thought it would be like a real big lizard or snake. But it stood there, close enough for me to have felt its breath and to smell it. It's what they call the Louisiana Swamp Monster. It stood taller than me, well taller, eight to nine feet, covered in thick, dank, long, scraggly red fur, and a face covered in hair that looked to be part man, part something else. It was so terrible. It had an odor like none other. And it's even worse when it's standing a few feet away from you. It was just like a big man, a body of incredible width and size. It was also on two legs like a person, with two long arms. I noticed its feet were huge and webbed. It kind of looked like it was wearing flippers, almost. But it had arms that seemed to come all the way out of the front. It stood there staring at me, with its pure black eyes. I never felt more terror in a moment like that. It continued to stare at me, and we probably locked eyes for a good 5-10 seconds before it turned and just casually walked off, before finally stopping about 30 feet away and turning back to face me one last time. Then it finally returned and walked back off into the swamp. That was still to this day one of the most terrifying hunting encounters I've ever had, and I have seen some stuff. Now, after doing some research, I know for a fact that these things, these wood boogers, are real. I guess they don't only live in the woods of North America, but the swamps too. I think in Florida they call them skunk apes. I don't know. This is the first and only time I've ever seen one in my life. I almost wonder if maybe I got too close to its territory. I'll never know. When I go camping, I go camping. I don't go to any pre-arranged, pre-cut campsite where all my needs and problems will have been anticipated. Now, I take my tent and I go out into the wilderness. I probably camp in some places that I'm not supposed to, but that's the thrill seeker in me. So I have to admit after one incident, the thrill seeker in me isn't as thirsty as it used to be. I had set up camp in the middle of a small swamp. I liked being surrounded by life, and nothing is more teeming with life than a swamp, surprisingly. It was in the early evening when the swamp itself was darkening, but the sky above was still bright. I chose to look around my area then and see what I had at my disposal. It was while I was patrolling around that my footsteps, suddenly, sounded very wet and heavy. I looked down at my feet to see that I was actually stepping in very dry parts of ground. 
the heavyweight stomping came to a halt after my own footsteps did. I continued walking and keeping my ears open, observing that my own footsteps, the sounds of my own footsteps, were very natural and light. But then there were those heavy, wet, noisy footsteps that tried to be in perfect sync with mine. They tried to start moving when I started moving, and they tried to stop when I did. I looked around frantically, unable to stay calm. I couldn't see the other source, even though it sounded like it was right next to me. I couldn't see any footprints in the mud, and I could not ignore my instincts any longer. I began packing up my gear. While I was probably overdoing this, something powerful gripped my shoulders from behind. I swung out blindly, only to see that there was nothing and no one there. I was practically running out of the swamp, and again, the heavy footsteps matched mine, but they ceased when I had run a good distance. Has anybody else or you had any experiences being pursued by things that you can't see that insist on matching your footsteps? Any answers would be greatly appreciated. I took it upon myself to go fishing in a body of water that was located in a dense, dense swamp. It was probably an illegal move to make, but I couldn't resist. I had to see just what kind of fish could be caught in that environment. I had set everything up and got my line cast into the water. I was starting to feel really relaxed and even settled in. I wasn't sure why, but I couldn't check the feeling that I was being watched. Not that anyone was looking at me closely, but something was aware of me and seeing what I would do. The more I tried to write this off as paranoia, the stronger the feelings got. So much so that I was spending more time looking around than concentrating on my fishing. And when that happens, you know that something has really dug into my mind. After I got back to staring at the water, I noticed several sets of ripples coming from the same place. They were coming from a large mossy rock. Sure enough, it was sending out steady sets of ripples that weren't coming from everywhere else in the water. I couldn't tell you why those ripples might be near us. Figured maybe some fish had gotten underneath the rock to shelter from dangers, but something was a mess about the rock. This I found out to be fact when the rock appeared to move and tilt slightly, and then out of the water. The rock raised a head that could have passed as a short-nosed crocodile, except the eyes were close together and the nose was short. The face even kind of looked human, with the high cheekbones and the stern eyes. The eyes even had a separation between whites and irises. It flicked out long enough and looked over my direction. And this was the strangest looking reptile I'd ever seen. I grabbed my fishing gear and I ran out of there in such a hurry. It terrified me. And even recounting this experience, even though I'm typing it, still gives me chills. I hate thinking about it. And I'm hoping that writing this out is therapeutic, enough for me to forget about it at least, or get over it, whichever happens first. Back in the 90s, my parents took me to Disney World. Alongside the usual theme parks and Mickey-shaped ice cream, my dad insisted that we do a couple of other local attractions, because what a total dad thing to do, right? So, we headed down to the Everglades for an airboat ride, covered head to toe in bug spray, not remotely looking forward to it, but knowing dad, he probably spent a small fortune just for this trip alone, and he wanted to have fun too. And wouldn't you know it, it had been baking hot and humid every day since we had gotten there, and as soon as we arrive on the boat, it starts raining. Now, you might say that it doesn't matter if you are on the water and get wet. Well, it might not matter if you are in the water, but it sure as does if you are on the boat on the water because then you get to spend the damn afternoon in damp clothes, praying 
that the spray doesn't come off, and you are now wet and hot, this perfect environment for tons and tons of mosquitoes. So when we arrive, we are the only people dumb enough to turn up. So the excursion to maybe see some gators ends up being just me and my dad, as even as my mom decided to chicken out and hunker down in a coffee shop instead. I remember the pilot was pissed, but oh well. We were about 20 minutes when we were hit by the worst stink I have ever come across, and I was a teenage boy who played high school football. There spent many hours in locker rooms and buses full of other stinky, sweaty teenage boys. My dad actually had the cojones to look at me, as if to ask if I made that smell, and what are you eating, boy? The pilot was even starting to look a little nervous, so much so that he accidentally swerves the airboat a little fast, taking a corner, and we sway about. My dad called out. The pilot turned around and apologized. I distinctly remember thinking, we haven't gotten an airboat pilot who gets seasick, surely. Make sure you get seated and keep your hands and feet inside. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was equal parts WTF, scared and totally excited by what I was staring at into the boat or what was staring at us. It was tall like a man, but covered in this real rusty reddish kind of hair. It kind of reminded me from that movie, Harry and the Hendersons. But this creature was much uglier, much uglier. It was making this weird throaty noise, like when you've gotten a bad cold and are trying to clear the phlegm from your throat. It was headed our way. It looked right at Dad, then right back at me, then right back at him. My dad was beside himself, in terror and shock, and the pilot was basically shouting to hold on and trying to turn the boat around fast. Here I am clinging onto my seat, and we sped out of there like no tomorrow. When we arrived back at the docking area, the pilot ushered us out super fast, and we were back in the coffee shop with Mom while she was still on her first coffee. The entire way back, my dad was asking me, what was that, son? What do you think that could have been? Could it have been a new species of swamp ape? What was it? He wasn't sure, and I could tell he was still terrified, but the color was coming back to his face. Well, apparently, what we had seen was known as the Florida skunk ape, a Bigfoot-type creature that apparently lives in the swamps of Florida. Before this, I had never heard of such a thing, and if I had, I was sure to think of it as lore, a fake ghost story. Although this creature never appeared threatening or hostile in any way, its size alone was more than intimidating. It was like a giant bodybuilder. I mean, this thing was huge, utterly massive. Unfortunately, I didn't get the best look at its face. I mean, I can get a general idea and I was right about the Harry and the Hendersons. But when I say uglier, I do mean its face was uglier. Its eyes must have been either very dark or black, because I couldn't really make out any detail of that part of its face. It's a story my dad and I share with certain friends and relatives. Some people believe us, other people don't. But that's my experience with the Florida skunk ape. I had a phobia surrounding swamps and wetlands, so it was only a matter of time before, with some coaxing with from my friends, I was challenging myself to confront my fear. I chose a swamp that could have been worse, but it also could have been a little less claustrophobic. But I digress. My friends walked around the place with me so that I could get acclimated to the environment. After a while, they decided they were going to abandon me and leave me by myself. The bad part of this is they were not telling me what they were full on planning. At the time, I didn't think they did it because I thought it was funny. It probably did, like a mama deer that gives their fawn a few minutes by themselves just to see what they're really made of. I found out in a hurry that I wasn't made of anything good. You talk about one scared man that came pretty close to peeing himself. 
Actually, that's only half the truth. I did manage to wet myself, but it wasn't because the swamp. I started to hear a whining, whistling sound. You know, the kind you hear from somebody who is trying to breathe, even though they're heavily congested. There was movement around me in the swamp, and I thought that my friends had come back for me, and we were going to have a good laugh about how they abandoned me, and we would all get the hell out of there. But it didn't quite go like that. The shapes moving all around me turned out to be these creatures that were built similarly to armadillos, except walking on their hind legs. They had long, bony spikes on their tails and head, very small heads actually, that kind of extended on thicker necks and very scaly bodies. Their heads would sway from side to side and they began walking in circles around me and admitted that it almost sounded like a chant or a song or some sort of strange grunts. Heedless of the risk, I darted between them and broke their circle. I ran blindly, heedless of whether I collided with a person or a tree or even ran off a cliff. I blacked out before I could find out what the end result was. I woke up, surrounded by my friends who looked at me as if they had seen a ghost. To this day, I'll never be able to explain what I saw in the swamps that day. I have never heard of, or even seen, or even thought of a creature like these. Do you have any idea what these are? My grandma used to tell this story about something that had happened to her when she was much, much younger, before she even met my granddad. She was staying with her grandparents in their cottage, which at the time was surrounded by thick woodland and streams, kind of like something out of a picture book, she described. She and our great uncle Henry would play for hours and hours, those being the days when there was little else to do or before the worry of kids being abducted by weirdos. One day, near the end of the stay, my great uncle Henry had caught a nasty cold, bad enough that he was sent back to bed, so my grandmother went off to play on her own. She wasn't wearing a watch, since they didn't really wear those back then. It was always Henry's job to try and keep an eye on time. He was much better at time management, as always had been, and before she knew it, the sun was starting to set. She realized that she had gone further in the woods than usual, since she had been so caught up in the game that she was playing. She didn't exactly panic, but was certainly feeling a little anxious about being able to find her way back quickly before it got too dark. Again, it was Henry who had the good sense of direction, and my grandmother was always caught up in something in her own mind. Still is to this day. Mother told us they used to say she was away with the fairies. As she began heading back in what she hoped was the right direction, she noticed one of the many streams that they sometimes waded through. Since it was getting dark and the sun had lowered, so had the temperature, and she was mindful that she did not want to get wet and end up in bed. But then she saw these fairy lights, she described. That was how she referred to them, even after we had explored every different rational option. Fairy lights, which she decided must of course be the fairies helping her find her way home. I'd like to find a 14-year-old these days who still believes in stuff like that, but it was simpler times, and actually, she ended up being an illustrator for children's books, so I guess that was always in her. Anyway, as she followed these lights, she began to wonder just for a moment if they were helping her, because as she passed a big tree with a rope on it, she could have sworn that it was the opposite direction to the house and was in fact further towards the boundary where they were not supposed to cross. But, being Mrs. Dolly Daydream, she couldn't remember why they not meant to go that far, despite the initial feelings of resilience. She trusted the fairy folk implicitly, and knew they couldn't possibly be trying to cause her any harm. It began getting darker, and she could just about see the lights guiding her now, 
when she heard her name being called. She stopped where she was, listening to the voice, and suddenly her granddad and one of the neighbors appeared. They cried out to her to stop, since she had no good sense of where she was going. They asked her to come to her slowly, which she did, and she noticed her fairy friends had disappeared. They didn't say much until she was safely home, her grandmother hugging her. It turned out that she had only been a few feet from a very steep ravine, which was full of sharp rocks. It turned out that the water was a lot deeper where it pooled from the stream, and there wasn't a lot of health and safety back then. People just relied on common sense not to go near these places. When they'd ask her why she was walking that way, she told them about the fairies lighting the way. They told her then that they didn't want her going back out into those woods. Apparently, the lights were really a thing, but they weren't tiny lanterns being held by tiny fairies. They were will-o'-wisps, and they were not something to be messed with. They were actually trying to lead my grandmother to the ravine and hoped that she would fall and hurt herself, or worse. Thank God her granddad found her in time. That's my grandmother's story, and she's retold that to me so many times that I've luckily been able to formulate enough to share with you. I've always found it interesting, especially the prospect that they're actually being real-life fairies. I've only heard this a few other times, but it's usually like in Ireland or England, not so much in the woods of North America. But my knowledge on fairies is very minimal, so you'll have to excuse that. Since you seem to be the cryptid guy, I figure this is right up your alley, and you'll probably be much more educated on it. So, enjoy. I took it upon myself to start tramping around a swamp that I knew was private property, but I don't know if it was government property or personal property, but signs were posted everywhere, and there's nothing like a cheap thrill to round out your weekend. And that's when I heard this peculiar sound. It was a combination of heavy breathing and a sort of strange squishing sound. My first thought was that somewhere something could be stuck in the mud. I started honing in on the sound, and it appeared to be coming from what I initially perceived to be a larger rock. When the rock moved, the rock switched to tail, and I realized that I was up against something much bigger. Its back seemed to be this hardened carapace, not unlike a tortoise. It seemed to be aware of me the moment that I became aware of it. It raised its head and looked at me, with two very tiny black eyes. I was too fascinated by its bizarre features to notice right away the stains on its lips and its claws as it slowly chewed. Half a second later, my heart was slamming in my chest because I noticed this thing was a carnivorous predator. It was eating on a dead alligator, or so it looked like. After that, I ran, and I ran, and I ran, never having seen an animal so bizarre looking or looking just like this one. My feet were taking me further than I needed to go. Either this thing was too slow or it simply showed no interest in me. I've tried to do some research, but I have never found any such creature, nor has anybody heard of any such thing living in the swamps. I'll tell you one thing. It was new for me, and I don't ever wish to see it again. I work for a local radio station as the night DJ. It suits me down to the ground, as I've always been a night owl, rather than a morning person. One of my favorite parts about the job, despite having done this now for well over 10 years, are the listener call-in sessions. Considering I broadcast through the night, when the vast majority of regular people are fast asleep, You'd be surprised by the steady growth we've seen, not only of listeners, but interaction too. Not just people who have forgotten to turn off their radio once they've fallen asleep. I guess with the number of people working shifts these days, it sort of makes sense. The Collins, though, wow. We always talk about all kinds of stuff, but the thing that always gets me 
the switchboard lit up, so to speak, is like when I ask about a spooky story. Who's got one? They range from rehash of old tales, to weird and wonderful, every so often and downright terrifying. Being a Brit, most of the stories tend to be ghost-related. Maybe that is just what we do best. But a few weeks ago, I received one of the most frightening and yet interesting tales of my entire career. The person calling wished to remain anonymous, but said that they had Native American heritage. They were British. Their mother was of Native American descent and had been over here studying when she had met her father, a Brit. Although they chose to live and raise a family here in the UK, their mother had included a lot of her culture into their upbringing. Stories and traditions and legends dating back centuries of her own people. One of the stories that she had related to them was about those that are called skinwalkers. Being a Brit, although they embraced their mother's heritage because they were literally the only child in their school and community with any sort of links to America, they were simply just stories. Stories which were fascinating by their own right, but didn't seem anywhere near as real as they might have done when they actually lived in the US. That changed. This kid was 17, and for the first time, they had to be left alone. Their parents had to head off to some charity convention, and it would finish too late to drive home. A quick note, these parents were overly conservative, to the point to where they wouldn't leave their teenager home alone. Even at 17, it was a bit of a stretch for them. While I understand nowadays, most are left home at 12 years old, if not younger. Some people don't exactly have that luxury. They were a good kid after all. Never been in trouble, and there were no wild parties. They didn't have any friends around or any booze to raid. They simply did their homework, hung out, and went to bed. Oh, and the other reason their mom and dad were happy to leave, there was a Cloudy. Cloudy was their golden retriever, crossed with a husky fur baby and Cloudy thought she was second mother to my caller. Worshipped them, and their parents knew they'd be safe with their protector. So, when Cloudy began growling at around three in the morning, she was sleeping on their bed. They began to get an odd feeling, just as they were trying to work out if they were dreaming or not. You know, that fuzzy state you're in when you're suddenly awoken from a deep sleep. Cloudy launched off the bed, and positioned herself in front of the window again, growling, heckles up, teeth bared. And then, they heard why. There was a scratching from outside. Sounding like just below their window, they could hear the words, let me in, followed by their name, oh, and just to add to what must have already seemed like their worst nightmare, it was their mother's voice calling. Their mother, who had called just a few hours prior, and was already miles away. Somehow, they managed to work up the courage to look out of the window. I'm not sure I would have been that brave. And I have to tell you, as they recounted this part to me, I had shivers running down my spine. Cloudy had begun going nuts, barking and growling, and trying to throw herself at the window. All the while, they could clearly hear their mom's voice over and over, the same saying over, let me in. And when they looked out their window, there was indeed something down below, something they could just make out in the moonlight. A dog, or to be more clear, something that resembled a dog, except it stood up, proportions all messed up. That, and the fact that it was able to mimic voices, alerted them to exactly what was outside. What they believed to be a skinwalker. They told me that they knew all about them from their mother. And the most important thing, other than quite obviously not letting them in, was to never make eye contact or speak of them directly. If you did happen to look directly at one, that was how they could directly take over you, and how they could use you mimic you, 
copy you. They were never entirely sure how this particular one ended up in the British gardens, but when their parents came back the next day, their mom performed some traditional rituals, and since then, they haven't seen or heard of anything again from these creatures. While there are no medicine men nearby that their mothers couldn't utilize, she had made sure that she had learned the correct rituals to rid them of this problem. Pretty scary, right? I always thought that things like this were attached to a location, but maybe they're more attached to a person or culture. I guess sometimes we'll just never really know. I live in part of the states where there are plenty of places that used to belong to the natives, and it's rife with stories and sightings of all sorts of things that their legends and traditions hold. Until recently, I treated those tales and stories with the same interest, yet disbelief as any regular ghost story or even supposed UFO sighting. I find them fun, but I don't believe it. It was always a lot easier that way too. Because for me at least, if you don't believe, it's not real. And if it's not real, there's no need to be afraid. I like to keep fit. So being healthy in my body and mind is very important. But my body sometimes has other plans. Such as a knee injury, which meant I wasn't supposed to go running on it for a while. I could, however, and was encouraged to, take long leisurely walks, and luckily for me, the place where I lived was littered with thick woodland and trails for walking. I'd wake up and put something on my phone like YouTube, put my earbuds in, and off I would go, sometimes doing two or three hour walks at a time. And it was actually on one of these early morning walks, I guess around six in the morning, when I saw something I can't describe. Because of the early morning hour, I like to get these walks in as much as possible before I come home and start work. I don't tend to see too much other folk. The occasional early dog walker, or even more rare, another jogger. Usually it's just me and the birds, and that's fine. But on this particular morning, I could clearly make out a shape in front of me. Now I say clearly, and then shape. So let me clarify what I mean. I could see there was something not too far ahead of me, that it was rather large and moving. But we were well into fall at this point, and it was still fairly dark out since it was around 6 in the morning. Although I could see a shape, I couldn't exactly tell who or what it was. And the most odd at first, and then, the more I thought about it, quite frankly, the more terrifying about the shape was, and that it kept changing. Now I know you're probably thinking that it wasn't changing, but as the sun was rising, it was becoming less in shadow, something like that. If you think that, that it just becomes a normal person or animal taking a stroll just like me, but it absolutely had nothing to do with the sun or shadows. It's been a while since I messed about with my light making shadow puppets, but I was 100% sure that it simply was impossible to make something turn from the size of a large dog, to a bear, to a person, and back and forth over and over. And you know what? Once my mind accepted what I was seeing, I turned back and ran. Need be damned, I'd pay for that later, but I'd rather suffer with a messed up knee than stay there any longer. I honestly have no idea what that thing was doing there, but it just oozed evil and wrong, and I will not be going back on that particular trail again, even when my damn knee is better. And that's not the worst of it, because now, I can't stop thinking about what else might be out there. Did I see a skinwalker? Are skinwalkers real? And if they are real, what else is real? Does that mean everything in Legends is actually real? I come from a family of hunters. My granddad says our ancestors were trappers back in the day, and we come from a long line of people who supposedly were just born for it. We've traveled all over the states to hunt different things, 
and have managed to take most stuff off the list. But there was one creature that remained unticked off the list. And as surprising as it might be, doesn't mean it's not a hard animal to kill. An elk. Granddad hadn't managed one, and neither had Dad, and it was looking like his hunting days were at an end now, since his eyesight had gotten really bad, and even Mom had forbade him from using his gun, in case he shot himself. For whatever reason, my granddad and dad only stuck to hunting bear and deer. Nothing really else. I mean a few things here and there, but why they never tackled elk, I'm not so sure. It was up to me to take elk off that list, and I had the perfect plan. I had met with some like-minded friends, and we just so happened to have an old wooden lodge in the same spot of the woods where there were plenty of elk. After heading up there, going through a hell of a drive, I didn't tell anybody where I was going. I wanted it to be a surprise. Everything is as my buddy had said. I'd make myself comfortable when I got there, ready to head off very early the next morning. There was a light dusting of snow, but I was prepped for that and had brought thick, thick warm outdoor clothing. Anybody who hunts know you have to layer up in order not to freeze your buns off. Waking up the next morning, full of adrenaline and determination, I was going to make sure our family got that thick bag of elk. I dressed warmly and off I went, crunching through the snow, and was so excited to see elk tracks. I got myself in position, and luckily, my buddy already had a makeshift hide up there. And then I saw it. An absolute beast. It was massive. Hell of a lot bigger than anything I was expecting. It was facing away from me, and for some reason, I had the shot but I didn't take it. Part of me wanted to look at it more, look at it in the eye, so if it couldn't see me, somehow, it would know who was the boss, who was always around. I waited, and then it turned. Now, I have killed many, many things, obviously not elk, but other animals. My finger should have just been ready to pull that trigger, no matter what. But I froze up. Whatever in God's name that thing was in front of me, it wasn't a regular elk. It was already unusually large, and this wasn't the first time seeing an elk in the wild. When it turned, I saw its face. It looked distorted. I don't know how to describe it, but wrong. Its eyes looked different too, and it looked me right into my eyes, and I felt this ominous feeling. It's really hard to describe. Its face is what will always haunt me. It made me just kind of want to walk off. And after that, I just gave up and left it be. I know there's really not much to my story, and that it might be kind of lame, but there's just something I can't quite put my finger on. I don't really believe in scary stories or Native American lore, but there was something different in these woods that day. Something I can't even begin to describe. Whatever it is, I feel like it shook my soul.